Okay, welcome to another episode of the Teacher Boss Show. My name is Florence Okwasogu, um, Teacher Empowerment Coach. And today on the Teacher Boss Show, I have with me Kristen Schneider, Marketing Strategist. Um, just in case you don't know what the Teacher Boss Show is all about, it's really a, a platform to have conversations that empower teachers to become the boss of their health, happiness and life. So I'm excited to be on the show today with Kristen. As I mentioned, she'll be sharing her journey of becoming her own boss and what that means and looks like to her. So welcome, Kristen. Thanks, Florence. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Can you start by telling us a little bit about who Christian Schneider is? Sure. Uh, so like you said, I used to teach. Um, when I taught, I was a special education teacher. And in Ohio, where I'm based, you're certified K through 12. So I, I taught a lot of different ages and basically every subject. But most of what I did was in the 7th through 12th grade range and typically math few others, but usually math. So um, that was what I did for just under five years. And in the process of that, I launched the businesses that we'll talk about today. Um, and I, I think I sent my notice in almost, we're almost up to when I, I sent that in about eight years ago. So okay. I've been in business for 10 years. I've been just in this and not teaching and business for eight. So it's been a while and I kind of forget that sometimes, but it has been. And I have three kids. I live in Cleveland and um, stubborn beagle and a great husband. And we've been trying to get over towards you all sometime soon, but COVID has put a wrench in that. Okay, so you're trying to hop over the Atlantic or maybe not hop. <laughs> yeah, well, it was going to be a boat because of our dog, but now it'll be a plane because I'm not getting on a cruise anytime soon. But um, yeah, no, we had a whole, we have a whole, at least a year planned in the okay, wow. UK, Ireland mm -hmm. area. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So you stopped, well, you've been in um, business for 10 years now, but your transition out of teaching to business took about two years. About, yeah. Um, I had, uh, the transition was, it was not what I had originally planned. You know, typically when you're teaching, you go to the end of the year and then you just don't go back the following year. But I had, um, we had some issues with fertility and things like that. And I had medical leave from a miscarriage and then ended up mm. needing some more extra, you know, extra time to come out of that. So I actually worked my way out kind of slowly in mm. the middle of the year and helped them transition and things like that. So um, it was not the planned transition, but it was a transition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what led to you deciding to leave teaching? Well, you and I had mentioned when we were chatting earlier, I actually had gone into my job knowing that I wasn't going to stay in teaching mm -hmm. for, you know, 30 years and retire. Um, my mom has, has done that. I have a lot of friends who are still doing that, but by the time I had gotten my first job, I had already started kind of dabbling in business stuff. Mm. Um, and uh, so I, I had planned on the process of eventually going out. So I, I didn't have as much of a, a lightning bolt moment of, oh, I want to do this instead, or I can't do this anymore. Um, it, had, it had always kind of been the plan. And that's why I had been working on it for a, a, a few years. Mm. Um, but probably very similar to a lot of people, you know, who might be thinking about it now or anytime. I we had some changes in staffing. We got very understaffed. Um, I was actually in an online school at the time, even 10 years ago. It was mm. less common then, but I, that was how I taught. And I loved it. I, I like tech quite a bit, as we'll talk about with some of the side hustle things. Um, I, lo I loved that part of it, but they went from, they, they let go 60% of the teachers and then almost tripled our special education caseloads. And it just got to be too much. Whether I was trying to do a business at the same time or not, it was too much. It was, yeah. I was all paperwork and no kids and I was, mm. I needed a change. But did you enjoy what you were doing? I think you mentioned that you, you did, you did. I, yeah. I loved teaching, um, mm. which actually makes it hard. Yeah. To switch. Yeah, it does. Um, I definitely know that 
well, you wouldn't go into teaching if at some level you didn't enjoy doing the work, whether that's, you know, the subject delivery or working with the, the kids or the students themselves. So, yeah, I definitely know that it is often hard for teachers to leave teaching behind because there is that connection and that loyalty. Um, did you also feel that push and pull? I did. Um, especially because of how I left in, you know, in the middle of the school year because of the mm. personal stuff. So that made it, you know, a, a little bit extra tricky because you're not only dealing with leaving teaching in general, you're leaving specific kids in the middle of the year and, mm. and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so there was, there was, there was that push and pull, like you mm. said, uh, I quickly found out and I wish I had known before that I didn't have to leave teaching behind just because I left teaching in school behind mm -hmm. um, interesting <laughs> so i i found my way into teaching just differently since then mm. in a lot of different ways so mm. you know we i know we'll talk about some of those even in the side hustle ideas but mm. um yeah it, it it's it's there and it's it's not entirely gone every maybe 18 months or so i'll think about whether there's something i could do to get back into yeah. like working with school age kids at the very mm. least um I don't, I, the idea of going back to the classroom has been gone for probably about five or six years. Okay. I let my license lapse. Um, okay. So it took a bit. Yeah. I mean, I do notice that there is a difference between the American education system and the UK education system. There's a thing with licenses and, you know, states and, you know, the legalities of leaving, especially in the middle of the year and the repercussions. And then let's not even bring in pensions. That seems to be yeah. a whole other issue lots and lots of red tape to to go through in order to leave it's like they literally do kind of tie you in and say no 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 yeah. um one of the things that you mentioned was right at the beginning with your first job you chose how long you were actually going to stay in teaching for is that correct yeah so i like i said i knew by the time i was done with college that i wanted to start a business and mm -hmm. i knew nothing about business, just like I knew nothing about teaching at the time, you know. Um, but I knew enough to know that there was probably a good chance at some point I'd have to pick one mm -hmm. or the other that very few people teach for 30 years and run businesses at the same mm -hmm. time. So yeah. um, like you said, pensions are complicated here and every state is very different. But in mm -hmm. Ohio, where I taught and where I am now, you had to pick between two different types of investment accounts and how your employer contributed to them. And one of them you had to commit to, you weren't going to touch the money. And you, you know, it was, it was there for when you retired. And then there was another one where after five years, you got to take the money with you for your own retirement account mm -hmm. instead of leaving it with the state's pension system. Um, so you can roll it over into a different investment you can even withdraw it if you want to pay penalties, which is actually how I ended up funding my business. Okay. Um, but I knew that ahead of time and I picked the one that after five years I was allowed to take with me, mm. um, which was mm. why I taught in about five years. So, um, yeah, it, it is. It's weird. And I don't know how that carries over from state to state, to be honest. Mm. But here it was worth knowing. And I don't remember who kind of clued me in on it. I don't know if mm. it was the person who hired me or just, you know, a friend. That was or a lucky coincidence, but, right? Yeah. A lucky a lucky break. Okay, so five years. Yeah, so that seems to be around the number of years that teachers either decide to stay or leave. And it's usually, you know, that's when they've reached crunch time and burnout time. Can you relate to that at all? I can. I think my, my window might be a bit shorter. Mm. Um, I have ADHD and I, I tend to need a new project of every couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, but I switched jobs in the middle of that five years and yeah. went from an in-person school to the online school and, and I was doing my business. So that five mm -hmm. years still was fine. But it, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just long enough for you to realize whether or not it's going to slowly get smoother because it works with the way you want your days in your life to work, mm -hmm. or it's going to slowly continue to wear you down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because it did seem to be that people, you know, I wasn't the only one thinking about that change mm, mm, at that mm. point in time. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk about your your health 
then? Did you see that it had an impact on your health? I mean, what was the, I know you've, you've mentioned that you wanted to start a business anyway, and you were kind of doing it when you shifted to the online school, but was there a reason outside of a desire to start your business that created that transition or that need to move at that moment? Yeah, it, it, it was absolutely my my health in a couple different ways. Um, like I said, I was at an online school, but it was it's it still was an official. They're non public chartered schools, but they're still, you know, run through the state education department and mm -hmm. things like that. It, it's a full blown school. The students leave with diplomas. It's it's the same setup. It just happened to be online. Um, so it was, you know, as every other teaching job. 24 <laughs> seven. Mm. Um, and like I said, they, they increased our, our caseload by almost three times. And so it was just, you know, there's so much paperwork in special education, at least here. I, I don't know if it's the same everywhere else, but like you said, there's quite a bit of red tape and, and a lot of the paperwork is necessary because it's what helps teachers help the kids. So it's not mm. in and of itself a problem, but when you have three times as much, it becomes mm. Mm. a problem. Um, and between that and meetings, and like I said, we had, like, I had some personal health issues and things that I was dealing with and, and I was grinding my teeth and not sleeping and mm. trying to heal from, you know, the miscarriage and dealing mm. with the stress of the job and, um, lots of different things. And after, I don't even know what number of call to my husband one afternoon when I was driving home from something and I was tired and upset and he said, you've been talking about quitting forever. Like just maybe you need to think about doing it now and not two years from now. Mm. Um, so oh, how lovely was, and supportive of him. Yeah. He's, he's always been amazingly supportive. Oh, wow. But, um, lovely. Yeah. So it was, it was, yeah. And, and it's business is stressful too, but yeah. I wasn't grinding my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I stopped getting the headaches, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about business then. Um, how has that been like? How has the going from teacher to business owner been like for you? It's been great um, to be able to direct what I want to do every day. You know, occasionally mm. it becomes overwhelming, but mm. typically is exactly what I want to do. Um, mm. When I started my business, I actually had always planned on being a, a wedding dress designer. So very, very okay. different than what I do. Yeah, you know? quite different. Um, yeah. So when I started, my first my first four or five years were all bridal. Um, okay, wow. I, I designed a collection. I, I um, did all of that stuff. And then eventually I started and ran a collective of independent designers. This is when Etsy was like just beginning to be mm -hmm. a thing. Um, I planned and organized shows during New York Bridal Fashion Week. Oh, I wow. did um, a magazine mm -hmm. and I had a store, a whole bunch of stuff. But in the midst of all of that, I fell in love with the marketing and the tech and the things that we needed to run the show mm -hmm. and the store and to help my uh, designer clients because I did start helping them for the shows and things mm -hmm. like that with their marketing and their tech. So I, I found my way into what I do now. <laughs> yeah. But in, in this, in in every level of the different businesses and variations of the business, I still was able to. This sounds like a good idea. I'm going to do it. And for me, that's the best part mm -hmm. because I do that all the time. So it sounds like you were really following your heart, following your gut, and going with what felt right for you at that time. So being yeah. the boss, basically. Yeah. 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 And it's, it is, it's most of the time it's a blast. Every once in a while, the leaps are a bit big, the ju mm. jumping out of teaching. And then when I made the decision to close the storefront mm. to go a hundred percent into marketing and no more bridal, mm. those were probably the ones that were the hardest. Okay. So let's talk about that then, because it seems like there needed to be a couple of things to happen in you for you to be able to make those shifts. Can you remember what it felt like and what you did in order to go from one to the other? Yeah, so this I guess is one of the do what I say and not what I do things because to me, typically, I don't make the leap until I've hurt myself trying to do too many too long. Okay. okay. And I, you know, I've, you learn, I've done better 
right? Yeah, I yeah. didn't let it go on as long the the time that I left the store, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I tried to do the teaching and the business to the point mm -hmm. where I probably shouldn't have pushed yeah. it that far. I tried yeah. to do the store and the marketing to the point where it got to be too much. Um, so, you know, learning to, to listen to, like you said, kind of the, the inner plans or desires a little yeah. bit sooner yeah. is a skill that I've been developing for 10 years, yeah. <laughs> but and it's, I, you know, it's better. I, I think that's a, a big part of learning to be a boss because it is learning you are learning and you are changing and evolving and sometimes you need to well often you need to go through those difficult patches and see actually this doesn't work mm -hmm. and I need to maybe tweak the way that I'm operating who I'm being and then trial it out next time to see whether it works and we just keep on um evolving and and changing and yeah. I did and I did say to you you know I know that um one of my weaker areas is that I'm not the most organized person and I can I can say that and I've obviously found ways of being more organized but it's something that doesn't come um, so naturally to me but for other um, business owners I know that they are on it and when they were teachers they were absolutely on it as well um but obviously I succeeded at teaching and I succeeded um in um starting the business and growing my business um so yeah all yeah. shapes and sizes I guess right yeah I'm I'm very much in your camp I was lucky to have um good people around me as a teacher mm. and I'm lucky to have good people around me here um you know whether it's family or friends who happen to have businesses or friends who happen to be teachers or, um, hi, you know, hiring people to help when it, it makes sense. And mm. it, it is, it, like you said, it's, you, you make it work and there are all types, all types of business owners too. They're the, the ability to, to walk in and not need everything particularly organized can be a skill in certain situations. You know, yeah. <laughs> if I had been, too, you know, too regimented when we did the show the first time, it would it would have been a mess because I had no idea what I was doing. Mm. So any systems I had put in place would have fallen apart very quickly. Yeah. Um, and thinking on my feet was a lifesaver. But there's mm. other situations where, you know, I know having had somebody in my in mm. my corner who's really on top of things mm. has been a lifesaver. So um, to tie back into one thing you asked about making the leap, that was always a big help too. I mentioned my husband having, you know, having a yeah. conversation with him. That was not at all our first, but um, him, business coaches, groups of other business owners, groups of other people teaching, whether it's formal or informal, those conversations have a way of helping me get to clarity, even though it's my own clarity, the, the support and, um, kind of more practical nature of ignoring some of the, the things that seem big in your head, but aren't. Yeah. Once, once it gets voiced out loud has always been very helpful. Yeah, so it sounds like you're saying that the support and the community piece have been big and I can definitely echo that and say um, having the right support around you, being surrounded by the right types of people, um, finding the yin to your yang is also very, very helpful. Um, but also the mindset, it sounds like you're saying that there, there was a mindset piece as well um, and maybe being exposed to um, different ways of thinking and being supported you in making those, those shifts. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's the skills transfer, mm. but the mindset is very different. It has mm. to be, it's just a different world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So <clears throat> one of the things I know that we spoke about just before we went um, um, live with this was about things shifting so you've mentioned that you started as um, a bridal designer and you joined that world and you trans transitioned into marketing and tech so has it always been bridal and then marketing and tech or has there been you know a different journey within that it it's a good question it has it basically went from bridal to marketing and tech however the marketing and tech has looked different Okay. At different points in time, partially just because tech changes, mm. um, but also partially because, you know, as I've adjusted, realized what things I like to work on the most, what things I have, um, you know, more skill and things like that. Mm. I'll hone in on different offers. Um, it's also adjusted from time to time because different things require different types of attention. And, you know, I, I mentioned be, that I have 
three kids and now they're four, six and 11. But, you know, the, the type and time of attention and work that I had with newborns is different than the type and time and attention that I have now. Um, my, you know, my husband now is in my business and, and home, you know, splitting his time there. So I have a little bit more flexibility so I can do different things now than I did mm. when he was at an office nine to five, things like that. Mm. Um, so some of it changes out of necessity. Some of it changes out of interest. Some of it changes out of just the business changes, right? Um, yeah. My first thing was almost entirely building WordPress words, websites and tech has changed since then. And I realized that as a not particularly uh, down to the last detail person, building you know a website isn't necessarily where my uh, my skill set is best suited. I could do it, but it was stressful mm. um, because I was always having to find those little things that I don't innately catch right off the bat. And you know now I've been able to focus on marketing and tech that is more of the big picture thing and more mm. words and you just find what you're, what you're even better at. You can be good all the way through, but you find what fits better. And it, it sometimes shifts depending on who you are and what you have going on too. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Because you bring it with you. I mean, mm -hmm. I, the way that I can talk about how to write a sales page is informed constantly by what I learned about people's brains and how they process information when I was mm -hmm. a teacher. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, my knowledge of how WordPress websites work helps me help clients set up their social media strategies because they need tech to connect the two. Yeah. Um, yeah. You take it with you. Being well-rounded is something we tell students is the best thing. And then we get uh, worried that we're doing it wrong when we do it ourselves. Yeah. So one of the things that you mentioned before was this idea of <clears throat> when you leave and you start a business, you kind of feel like maybe you have to make the right choice at that moment in time. Then you have to stick with that choice that you've made um, for the rest of um, your business life or however long you've allocated to it. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. that And that's probably been my biggest mindset struggle because mm. there's not really a person in the world that when you say you're a teacher, they go, okay, interesting choice. Everybody gets teaching. Mm -hmm. And when you tell people not only that you're starting your own business, but that you quit teaching to do it, it, it can not make sense mm -hmm. to some people. Some people get it and that's great. And those are probably your people that we were talking about earlier, but mm -hmm. um, it's hard enough to be the person who jumps. And, and I've had a lot of personal hangups about being the person who doesn't finish. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had to retrain the way I think that it's not like it's not only finished when I die. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, like I don't have to see everything <laughs> through literally to the last second. Sometimes mm -hmm. stuff can have its own natural ending that isn't mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't that, you know, getting past, well, you know, people are going to think I'm just trying something new again. Well, that's who, you know, who cares? I yeah. say that now. I don't think that I don't think that in the, in my more insecure moments. But you know, now I say out loud, "Who cares?" I'm going to do. You know, I'm an adult. If I'm if I'm doing things that don't hurt people and that bring good into the world, then that's my prerogative. Yeah, I mean that's a really powerful way of looking at it. You're an adult, and if you're bringing good into the world, you're not hurting anybody. You're 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 making a difference you're making an impact and so what if you have to kind of make a few changes along the along the way you're figuring it out as you go along yeah yeah I mean I can definitely relate to that um I fell into um coaching but my coaching hasn't always looked the same I've worked with different types of people um along the way and yeah sometimes it's been like oh you know I feel bad for you know um changing who I'm working with but I always feel like the last group informs the next and uh, and I'm a better coach because I bring that with me and also one of the things that you said which I thought was really interesting was how your teaching pops up even now, can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
you know, I, I didn't focus on it as much. And to be honest, there's less of an opening for it in bridal than there is in writing and uh, course creating and things like that. But even then, you do so much. Teaching is, is so frequently person skills, mm-hmm. you know, dealing with people and, and helping them see things for themselves and, and walking them through decision making and learning and things without feeding it to them, you know, good yeah. teaching. Mm-hmm. And um, there's very few other jobs where that's not a benefit. Mm-hmm. And especially a lot of the jobs that you, know, you frequently will hear talked about on mm-hmm. podcasts like yours and with people like your audience, they kind mm-hmm. of gravitate towards that because clearly that's what they're good at. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, for me, it pops up most in my ability to help clients understand what we're planning for them. If we're doing done for you marketing, you know, I'm able to get clear answers from them about what they, you know, what they need and things like that. And the ability to ask the right questions is probably the one thing that comes out of teaching that I've seen be the most important, the ability to ask the right questions and then the ability to help people get from point A to point B and understanding. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a million other things, but those are probably the two biggest Mm -hmm. um, benefits. So, being able to ask the right questions helps us get beyond the surface level of what they 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 think they need this to say or what they are trying to get across to mm. their audience and things like that when it comes to marketing it can also help in just sales conversations uh, conflict resolution because that does happen all of that mm. those skills transfer and then when it comes to you know, helping people go from, okay, we're here, we need to be here. What are the steps in between? It's as, ev- everything you do with a client or teach somebody or whatever is basically a lesson plan mm. in my mind. And okay. I didn't talk about it that way publicly all that often because I was a little worried that it would come across as not professional as a mm. business owner. Um, now it's, it's my main keynote that I give when I go talk at conferences is teach us to care. And so I'll talk mm-hmm. about scaffolding and zones of proximal develop development and all of that and, and yeah. how it relates to marketing and working with clients and that mm. people's brains don't stop being people's brains when they graduate from <laughs> yeah. school and the ability yeah. to understand what people need and how they think and how they retain information and make mm. decisions that's teaching yeah it's also business oh, wow so it sounds like you found a way to marry the two worlds together that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I teach still. Like I, I think you and I had kind of touched on now. I and one of my main things I do is that I help we do marketing. I do a lot of the done for you services. Mm. Um, but the other maybe half of what I do is teaching workshops for people who want to do it themselves. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's I actually I think I added that. I added uh, some additional thoughts for your audience on the stuff that we were saying that they could tap into after. And I, I said yeah. there's so many people out there who know how to do skills. They know how to write emails. They know how to, you know, build a chair in their woodworking studio, whatever. But there's very few people who know how to do those things and know how to help other people understand. The, yeah. the teaching skill is not it's not universal and it's, it's not even just an innate skill. You have to study things. It's an mm. art and a craft. It's like you everything have to else. study and you have to put it into practice because obviously you can study it. But it's not one of those things that you can just read a book and you know, you know how to do it. You, there's yes. definitely yeah. the, the applied element to it as well. Yeah. So touching upon that then, if a teacher does want to shift into business, what are some ideas that you think would be a great, um, fit for them. Yeah. So it's, it's a, I, and one of the things I mentioned when I was, or that I, I wrote down when I was making notes for what we were talking about is that there's always a side note to this, that there's two that I, that I'll just kind of, I think people can get without us going in too deep. One is if you have some other hobby or skill you've been honing, you can do that. Uh, my first one was, so, I'm, I made money sewing and doing alterations and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my side hustle from day one before I even technically started my business. If I go back to that, I was in business a lot longer than I say I was. Mm. Um, So if you, you know, if you're really great at something like that, you can go do that. That works. Um, The second kind of more obvious thing is there's people who need teachers outside of school. So if you want to tutor, if Mm. you want to lead a homeschool pod, 
if you want to do things that are, are literally teaching just not in the official classroom setting, that's also something that you can do to mm-hmm. switch. Um, but I think those are kind of where people, that's, that's where people hear the most. And I, mm-hmm. I don't want to dwell too much on that because there's a lot of other things that like mm-hmm. we talked about the teaching skills can transfer to. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's where I have more information kind of jotted down. So, um, you can do a lot and your own personal skills and interest can lead to so many more options than what Mm. we'll have time to get into. But the ones that I, I wrote down for this particular conversation and for the, the different things that people can look at after are they're well suited for people who have done a lot of the things that teachers have done. Mm. And they are, ideas that don't take a lot of capital or money to get started. They don't take any kind of certification. They don't take, there, there's a lot less barriers to entry. You can get mm-hmm. up and running in this within a week in okay. almost every case. You might not have, you know, a client list so long, you have a wait list or anything right off the bat, but you can get up and, and running. So mm-hmm. one that you'll hear a lot of people get started in is virtual assistant work. Yeah. Any kind mm-hmm. of admin. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I love that if it's up your alley. I, I in particular, was n- that was never a good idea for me because of the whole, I'm better with somebody helping me stay organized, not helping somebody stay organized. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I did number two, which we'll talk about. Um, but if you are that person who is good at looking at something and saying, you know what, this is how we're going to do it. And I'll be the one who checks in and I'll be the one who moves those f- you know, file folders, I'll be the one who does mm. this kind of thing. I can post your social media. There's mm. assistant um, type work at every level in every industry. So that what's nice about that is even if you have an inkling that you think you'd like to get into this industry, mm. but that industry has a bit of a learning curve or a barrier to entry or some kind of certification or startup or connection that you don't have, you can go be an assistant for somebody in that industry, make a make a decent amount of money in that. And you can, you can get assistant jobs that are just jobs like for one company, or you can do it as your own business. Mm-hmm. I would, I would go that route. Cause I like having my own business, mm-hmm. um, but you can specialize in an industry. So if you think you might be interested in music production, you could figure out some of the basic admin tasks that that industry does. And you could go get a bunch of clients in that industry and you would mm-hmm. learn while making money. I think that's a really good idea because uh, I see a lot of virtual assistants. They kind of make themselves available to any and everyone. But what you're saying is, you know, you're taking it to another level where you kind of where you choose your niche and you become really skilled at the task related to that niche. And obviously, the more you niche, the more um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? I can't find it. But the more. Uh, um, the more kind of skills that you develop and the more that you can generate the income that you that you want to because you are skilled in 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 that specific area yeah absolutely there there are certain situations where i feel like it like for marketing i i kind of made the conscious decision not to niche down too much mm. um because i felt like we were not able to serve our clients mm because I kept constantly having to tell them, well, we're, we're going to find you somebody who can do that, but here's the bit we're going to do. Different industries are different. I think, like you said, in, <clears throat> pardon me, admin work or assistant work, or, you know, you'll hear people talk about business manager that you can kind of work your way into different roles, depending on what you like to specialize in there, because you are there to be kind of the, the hub of what is happening for your clients. Being specialized is a huge mm. benefit. So if you like being that person who's really, you know, focused in on one thing that you are the person for, that's a great place to live. Because like you said, it does, it does, it gives you a clearer way to find clients. It gives you clearer content to talk about on your own marketing. It can help you charge more and Mm. get clients that have been, you know, they've been in what they do for a while and they, Mm. they appreciate that expertise. It, I think it makes a lot of sense in that particular Mm. part Mm. of, Mm. you know, business. So that's the first, or well, third. Let's call it number three. Um, yeah. So number four. What's what's number four? 
Um, writing of some kind. Now, eventually that can grow into marketing. It could grow into journalism. It could grow into a lot of different things. But mm -hmm. uh, as you hop out of teaching, you already have a bunch of skills that people need in writing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have this split on the, the list, but basically writing, proofreading, editing, any of those things mm -hmm. are needed across the board. Mm -hmm. You can specialize in an industry. You can be a general writer you can focus on blog posts social media and emails which is where i tend to live you can do website copy which is also something that we do other people are particularly in demand as as research mm -hmm. um, white papers which are, are like tens of pages long and and more academic there are people mm -hmm. who go straight entire books mm -hmm. all of those are viable businesses and and they can grow and flex with you to be as big or as small yeah as you want yeah. them to be yeah um, and it's, it's a great option if you don't want to be, you know, kind of always on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Another fantastic idea. Um, and idea number five. Um, so that was the, the idea of workshops, teaching, things yeah. like that. If you have a skill, you can take said skill and match it with your ability to teach. Mm. Um, and you can offer them virtually or in person if it's you know something in a time period and a place mm. where you can actually do that mm. you know safely. Um, but virtual workshops can be great if mm. you you know I I did teach some alterations workshops for a, a while. Mm -hmm. um, I know people who have um, they've run cooking workshops. They've mm. they, they do and now I do marketing workshops and writing mm. workshops and how to do this and that stuff like that. My mom actually used to be a teacher, like I said, and she actually jumped at the end of last year to be a full time business owner. Oh, wow. um, and mm. so she does um, mindfulness and movement for kids mm. and yoga. Mm. Um, she actually works with schools, but she also works with families and individual like kids and classes and things like that. Mm. So she's she'll do workshops and things of that nature. So you can teach a whole bunch of different things. You yeah. might be really great at boat maintenance and there's a bunch of people who need to know, you know, how to do that. So if you can put together a teaching, you can make money doing it. Definitely. And I love the fact that you, you mentioned your mom and how she's still very much connected to um, education and working yeah. with young people. Um, I, I still see myself as a teacher, even though I've left formal education. I, I am a teacher and it's a it's I see it as yes, a skill, but it's also something that I feel that I can I have an innate capacity and an ability to do yeah. and I enjoy doing it. And so I tend to do a lot of teaching. I even see doing these things as as teaching because I'm being yeah thoughtful about the questions that I'm asking and I'm trying to help the viewers connect the dots or the listeners connect the dots between where they are now to where you know they want to be and that's scaffolding really isn't it yes yeah it's yeah. amazing right and to be honest I think people who have been this is true for every industry but when you're around everybody else who's good at what you do you don't realize that it's not a universal skill mm. Mm. so when you spend years and years in a school full of people who are passionate about teaching and know how to do it and we, you know everybody is good at in different ways but for the most part when you're in teaching you're around people who can teach mm. when you leave the school setting you quickly realize it is not a universal trait yeah. Yeah. it is not just what humans do yeah. it's what teachers do yeah. just like every other skill set so it is unique and it, it it's very needed outside of school settings adults in career situations need somebody who are going to help them learn mm. how to do x y and z um there's every every corporate company needs people who know how to teach. Every individual industry needs people who know how to teach. Um, teachers need people who know how to teach to be outside and, you know, talking about and supporting them. My mom's biggest thing right now is she's actually started a whole task force in our state. She's working with our senators oh, wow. and she's trying to build a teacher support system for health and wellness so that teachers mm. don't get burnt out. Mm. That's and so needed. She did great work when she was working with kids, absolutely. But she's also doing important and good work. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. And she's doing it in a way that fits what she wants to do right now. Mm. Too. Yeah. So I'm hearing so much. I'm hearing that there is so much potential 
for teachers to find something outside of the classroom to use their skills in a wide variety of ways to find their passion to learn to grow to evolve um, even if they are changing along the way it doesn't matter it's really the the journey of discovering where you fit and the goods that you can bring into the world and that just sounds so exciting yeah it is and it's never permanent in a good way right my mom mm. this it wasn't the first time that she left teaching she stayed home with us when we were young and then went back mm. and then mm. she went and you know had a you know some work outside of teaching for a few years mm. and then she went back with a totally different teaching certification yeah. mm -hmm. and things like that so you know who knows maybe in 25 years i'm back in classroom you never know um and, you know, now she's also doing, she teaches some university courses too. Mm. So there's always openings. I, yeah. I, when I, when I shut the store on, like I said, that actually was, it was almost harder because it was something I had started. So, you know, when you switch out of a classroom, you know, another good teacher is going to take over for you. Yeah. Um, when I switched what I was working on, you know, nobody took over my old business for me. I had to just know that it was going away Yeah, and uh, that was hard. Um, mm. but you know, I, I had to keep telling myself that it doesn't have to be permanent to be impactful. Mm. Yeah. And that phrase has stuck with me since then. And it's made it a lot easier to see, like you said, following your passion, following your impact, mm. being mm. okay with things shifting either a little or a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Fluidity, being yes. fluid. And yeah. teachers are great at that. Mm. Well, we have to be um, in the classroom. Anything can happen. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay. So I think the last thing that I want to talk about, we've already spoken about so much, um, but something that I have been thinking about quite recently is the idea that going into business and being a business owner helps you develop these skills that um, that grow you, evolve you. But if you then wanted to go back into a career field or, you know, um, go back into teaching, you've just, you've basically upskilled yourself in an amazing way. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because you're not everybody in your classroom is going to be a teacher. Your students will leave and do a lot. And the more life experience that you can give them, that's good. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, you know, there's no better. The teachers who are in there 30 years honing their craft also meet needs in a way that I can't. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I plan on teaching technology, career development to kids, whether it's in or out of a school system, you know, mm -hmm. who knows, but that's on my five to 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't do that if I haven't learned. Yeah. Yeah. technology in mm -hmm. in a way that I was never going to have the time and space to learn as a teacher because I would have been teaching in, yeah. a, in a good way mm -hmm. but I would have been teaching mm -hmm. so it, yeah how, it helped. yeah and how has becoming a, an entrepreneur changed you as a person changed you as a mom some practical things I've been home more mm -hmm. in in timelines that I wanted to be I was very lucky that I had found a full-time teaching job that was home at the time that was even less common mm. 11 years ago um, mm. than it is now. And, and I like tech and I like video calls and, and that fit me well at the time, mm. but I still was on a teaching schedule. It still was, it still was different. Mm. Now I, you know, I'm, I'm every, every adult is busy. Everybody's busy, but, but being able to set my own schedule to, um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm yeah. just laughing at the business bit because I just know how busy I am all the time. Yeah, so I mean, I it's not like oh, well, I've had so I'm I'm busy, but I can pick when I want to be busy. If I if my you know if my four year old wants to do something at a particular time and I don't have a call right then and I don't have a project I'm working on and, and I want to just turn off for an hour and go do it, I can. Um, if I don't work at night, I can. So that flexibility has been big for me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't turn off well. So I'm not the person that's like, oh, well, I can work three hours and it, you know, make it the same. And that's very possible. There are a lot of past teachers who do that. You can make the same impact and income in a lot fewer hours, depending mm -hmm. on what you pick. I, like I said, I don't turn off well, so I'm kind of always going on a different project. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but it lets me pick if I'm going to be on a project or with my, you know, my kids or doing something with a friend or a family or somebody who needs it. So the time freedom is big for me. I, I need the ability to be creative and launch new projects. Mm. And while that can be beneficial in the classroom, it does need to be controlled because yeah, does. Yeah. kids deserve stability mm. and the ability to know that I have space to go experiment with things. And it's not, I don't, I don't have to balance other people's experience in that nearly as much has given me a lot more creative freedom. And, mm. and for me, that has been one of the most important things mm. is that kind of intellectual freedom as much mm. as time and, and space and, and things mm. like that. Mm. Really interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Let's round up by you telling us a little bit about you, your website, your business. Um, how can we stay connecting with you? What what work what work do you do? I know you've kind of touched upon it a little bit, but let's just use this um, time and close up around the work that you're doing now and how you actually serve your your client base. Sure. So there's a few different things I do. The things that mm. would be most helpful for anybody who might be listening would be. Um, the work I do in Muchology, which mm -hmm. is my courses and workshops and the group that I mentioned earlier um, with strategy and, and live health and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's, um, it's, the name is based on Alice in Wonderland. They talk about muchness. So Muchology is the study of muchness and creating that in your, your personal life and business. Um, so that's a good place to find me. Um, KristenSchneider.com is the simplest way to make sure you can find what you need because it directs mm -hmm. people um, to, you know, copy brewers where you can get writing help, Muchology where you can get workshops and, and resources, New Lore, which is my agency. And I used to run it all under my name, but it became kind of difficult because different people needed different things. Yeah. So it's easier for me to explain what we can do to help in each silo because, you know, done for you is different than strategy is different mm. than the group and stuff like that. So those are the best places to find me. I'm on um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter um, in some form of my name. It'll be linked in different places. <laughs> I couldn't get my name on all of the platforms, so they're not all the same, but it's Kristen J. Schneider on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and uh, any any questions, any anybody who needs to brainstorm stuff from the things that we've talked about, I, yeah. I'm always happy to to chat and yeah so there'll likely be comments um when this is um going live so yeah. if um you can be available to uh answer Absolutely. those comments that would be great and obviously um just to say again um, I usually say in every show. So just to say, remind you about the Alive to Thrive community for teachers who want to take back ownership of their health, their happiness and their life and create a freedom lifestyle. And um, I know that, Christian, you've said that you'll come back as a guest expert. Yes. Yeah. And also contribute to the content library in some way, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. Groups like that have been consistently the best in, in investment of time and energy yeah. and everything in my business. It's when you can find people who get what you're going through and have resources, it's, yeah, it's the biggest help. Fantastic. Well, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you today. I've gotten so much and I'm sure all the viewers and listeners will also um, find something to take away from them for them. Do you have any last minute tips or anything that you want to share? Um, quick, a quick tip and then a thank you. So you need an email and a way to process payments. So get on Gmail and get on Square or Stripe and you can do any of those things that we just talked about. So don't, don't stress. Um, and then uh, thank you to you for having me and for the work that you're doing. I know, I, I wish I had had somebody who talked about this stuff when I was looking at it. It's invaluable. So well, thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> thank you so much. All Thanks. right, then.